Okay, here we go. Let's have a look. So, real quick review. Uh, we're gonna we're changing. You know, we're shifting into chapter four. I uh, did a bunch of work to set up. I think this is gonna. I think this is gonna be better. I think we're just gonna shift instead of doing assignments out of the out of the book. I just I built a bunch of uh, problems so we can just do kind of jump right into the maybe a little better Moodle style problems for chapter four and it'll it'll be a little less work for you guys because then the review will kind of take care of the review as we go along. Um, but you can give me some feedback. Tell me what you think. All right, so triangles and angles. We we'll do a little review. I know that everybody talked about this in in middle school, but it's been a while. So let's let's kind of review a lot of vocabulary stuff really in this first section. So we want to uh, what we want to be able to do here. Goals for the day. We want to be able to when given a triangle, we want to be able to classify the triangle, name it based on its sides and its angles. Okay, and then the other thing that we're going to kind of look at maybe the more algebraic thing we're going to want to be able to do is find, if we're given some information about a triangle, we want to be able to sort of fill in the blanks. Find, you know, what are the missing, the measures of the missing angles. And, and along with that, we'll have some, some examples, some problems where maybe you'll be solving for x. You know, x will be, represent the measure of an angle, or some expression like 2x minus 3 or something will, will represent the the measure of an angle, and you'll have to set up some kind of a geometry equation based on your knowledge of how the angles in a triangle are related to solve for x. Okay, so not, nothing too too scary there. Uh, definition, you know, this is pretty straightforward. A triangle is just a figure that has obviously three sides, right? It's formed by three segments that we call the sides of the triangle that join three non-collinear points. Anybody remember what we call those points, kind of the corners of the triangle? Vertices. vertices. Yeah. Yeah. One of them is a vertex, plural of vertex is vertices, right? Okay, so let's look at how we could classify triangles by sides. Okay, so if a triangle has three congruent sides, we call that equilateral. The, side, the name, you probably remember that. The name makes sense. Equa means same. <laughs> Lateral means what? Line. Line or side. Yeah, right. Lateral means, you know, really technically it means side. So that just says equal sides, three congruent sides. Uh, isosceles, now what's the definition of an isosceles? How many congruent sides are there in an isosceles triangle? Maybe. The, this is kind of a tricky one. There are at least two. You have to have at least two. Could you have three? You could. You could, actually. Uh, but you have to have at least two. So now think about this for a second. Is an equilateral triangle also isosceles? Mm -hmm. It is. It is because it has at least two congruent sides. It has three. Usually, when we talk about an isosceles triangle, most of the time, we're talking about a triangle that has exactly two congruent sides and one side that's kind of an oddball, that's not congruent to the other two, like it's drawn in this picture. But it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, and then scaling, remember scaling just means none of the sides are congruent. All three of them are, are, have different lengths. So that's how we classify uh, triangles by their sides. How about by their angles? Well. We all know, what, remind us real quick, what's an acute angle? What's the definition of an acute angle? Less than 90. Less than 90. The measure's less than 90. Very good. Okay, so can you remember, now I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but this kind of helps a little bit. Can you remember what the sum of all the measures of the angles inside a triangle always adds up to be? 180, doesn't it? That's the triangle sum theorem. Now we're going to cover that in a second, but it's kind of useful to just to remember that. So if all of the <clears throat> if all of the, the measures add up to 180, an acute triangle then must mean what? About each of the individual angles in the triangle. What do you suppose that means? Without just go look up there because I don't cheat. Just kind of think, see if you remember. What would an acute triangle be then? What has to be true of all the angles in an acute triangle, do you suppose? Yeah, they're acute. All the angles are acute. They're all less than 90, right? So here's, here's one example of the infinite possibilities of an acute triangle. You know, if measure of angle A, B, C. So that would be that one, right? Remember how we name angles. Uh, the middle vertex is always the, or the, the, the middle letter is the vertex of the angle, isn't it? Right? 
So we'd go A, B, C. So that one's 70.26. C, A, B, so angle A is 41.76. And angle B, C, A, uh, we could also call it angle C, is 67.97. If I added all those up, what are you supposed to add up to? 180. Yep, you got it. But they're all acute. So what about a right triangle? What's a right triangle going to be? We know. You guys all know this, but just tell me kind of using geometry terms. 90 degrees angle. Okay, how many of those are there going to be? Three. Three 90 degree angles? Well, no, because it's going to be two. It would be one. Yeah. Actually, it's only one, yeah. That's a trick question. It sounded like you had to do something harder there. No, it's just, it's just one. I guess I skipped. Oh, that's, that one's coming up. Uh, equiangular. What do you think that means? Break that word down. Equa means same, angular, same angles, yeah. So that's where all three of the angles are congruent. Can you tell me what the measure of each of those angles would have to be? 60. 60. Doesn't have to be, doesn't it, right? How'd you get it? Putting you on the spot. Lauren? Yeah, 180 divided by 3. We know they all add up to 180. Divided by three, because they all have to be the same, get 60 only, right? So there's only one possibility there. It's acute also, isn't it? Right? Because all the angles are acute. Okay, right triangle has one right angle. Now, you can tell me something else about this. What's the measure of right angle? 90. 90. So then what must the two acute angles in a right triangle add up to? They're measured. We think, Carrie, what must the other two add up to? If the right angle is 90, <coughs> the sum of all of them is 180. What do you think? 90, yeah. Good. So the other two, what's another name for two angles that add up to 90? Two measures add up to 90. Complementary. Good. Yeah. Good. So we know that in a right triangle, the two acute angles are always complementary, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, what's an obtuse angle? Say it again. Oh, an, what is an obtuse angle? Yeah, what is an obtuse angle? That's over 90. 90. Say, say it again. More than 90. More than 90. So it's greater than 90 and? Less than 180. Say it again. 180. Less than 180. Yeah, good. It's got to be pinched in between those two, doesn't it? Now, if it's 180, then it's a straight angle. And that's kind of a weird one. But it, uh, an obtuse angle is going to be a big angle, but it's not, not quite a straight angle. So it's greater than 90, less than 180. In an obtuse triangle, now think about this, if they all have to add up to 180, right, and the obtuse angle is greater than 90 by itself and less than 180, that doesn't leave very much for the other two, does it? Right, so obviously there's only one obtuse angle in an obtuse triangle. The other two have to be acute. Could you have a right isosceles triangle? Think about that for a second. What do you think? Yeah, makes sense, doesn't it? Well, that would just be a, a right triangle where these two sides would be congruent, right? Could you have a right scalene triangle? Yes. What would that look like? Right angle. What do you know about all three sides there? They are not equal. They're not equal. Yeah, this one looks like it's a right scalene, doesn't it? Maybe the sides are like three, four, and five or something, right? Okay. Okay, parts of a triangle, the anatomy of a triangle here. So we've already kind of talked about this. So we would say that, that the, the three vertices here are the points A, B, and C. You know, A is one vertex, B is another vertex, C is the third vertex. If we're talking about angle A, uh, side B, C, or side C, B, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter how you name it. Either way, that's going to be the side that's opposite the angle A. And then the two sides that actually include the vertex at angle A are, are what we call adjacent sides, right? Adjacent just means next to, right? So that makes sense, doesn't it? This side is adjacent to angle A because it's next to it, right? It includes A. Um, if it's a right triangle, we have to be a little more specific. With a right triangle, we say that <clears throat> the three sides in the triangle have specific names. We always say, and you guys know this, we say that the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle, and the other two sides we call legs. 
And that's specific to a right triangle. You would never talk about the hypotenuse in like an obtuse triangle or an acute triangle. It wouldn't make any sense. Right? It's, that's only for a right triangle. In, a, in an isosceles triangle, same thing. There's a little bit of specific terminology that we, that we use when we talk about isosceles triangles. We'd say that the two sides that are congruent, we call the legs. And the third side that's different, we would call the base. Right? Now, that wouldn't make sense if that's only if, if the isosceles triangle is kind of a normal one, where two sides are congruent and the third side is different. Otherwise, it would be equilateral anyway. right? <clears throat> so why is it here that this triangle is an isosceles right triangle? Give me one reason. Well, why is it? There's two parts to that, aren't there? If we want to be really specific, we can categorize this or name this triangle by both its sides and its angles. Okay, which part? It's got two adjectives here. It's an isosceles right triangle. Isosceles is referring to what? Sides or angles? Sides. Yeah, it tells us about the sides, isn't it? And then the right triangle tells us about the angles, doesn't it? Right? So somebody tell me why is it that tell us that one. Uh, why is it that this is isosceles? What do you think? Lexi, why is this isosceles? What about this triangle, the red one up here? And kind of look at the measurements. What about the measurements is telling us? You say it again? Yeah, we have two congruent sites. Both of them are, are five feet long, same length, so they're congruent. Good. So that's the isosceles part. What's the right part? Yes, sir. It has a 190 degree angle. It has a 190 degree angle. Good. So it's isosceles right triangle. Good. And that tells us all we need to know about it. Right. That's very specific. Okay, identify the parts here. What would you, well, it kind of gives it to us, doesn't it? So these, the two congruent sides would be the legs, wouldn't they? And then the other one we would call the base, right? If we're talking about it as an isosceles, <coughs> if we're going to talk about it as a right triangle, we'd call that the hypotenuse. It's both, <coughs> both in this case, okay? Okay, last couple parts of this. This weird symbols, I didn't make this, but it still works. So this, is, this helps us understand the definition of, of what we call an exterior angle. So the smiley faces in this diagram up here represent the three interior angles. Why do you suppose they're interior? I mean, what's that really mean? Inside, right? So those are the three inside angles. The hearts represent the three exterior angles. Now, this people get confused about this. I want to make sure we understand this. So we create an exterior angle whenever we take one side of a triangle and extend it out to infinity, right? If we extend this out to infinity, look what that does. It, it creates another obtuse angle that's sort of joined to the triangle, right? Does it make any difference? I mean, really, if you look at this, it seems a little bit hokey because I could also extend that side out there, couldn't I? And if I did that, this could represent, that could represent, that's my heart, that could represent the exterior angle. What can you tell me about the magnitudes of those two? The measures of those two angles. How come? You're right, they are the same. How come? They're vertical angles, aren't they? So this angle and that angle have the same measure they're identical. They're both there, but usually we only would write one of them. We don't need to write both of them because they have the same measure anyway, right? And so understand that, that we, when we draw exterior angles, we only show one of them, okay? They're both there. Whichever one's most convenient is the one that you use, okay? So So we get one exterior angle, really two, we're only going to draw one, at each of the vertices. There's a relationship here. It's kind of interesting. Between the exterior angles and the interior angles. Would everybody agree that angle one is an exterior angle of this yellow triangle? Right? Did we see how we got that? We just extended 
the bottom side out to infinity, right? You can just send a ray out there going forever to create another angle. So angle one is the exterior angle, one of them, <clears throat> of this triangle. Well, what always happens here is that the measure of the exterior angle is always equal to the sum of the measures of what we call the remote interior angles. What does remote mean? What does remote mean? What's a more remote location? Uh, Pendleton or um, the high peak in the Wallow Mountains? High peak in the Wallow Mountains, right? It's further away, right? The further you are away, the more remote you are. A remote destination is one that's really far away, right? Gina did not go to any remote destinations over the holidays. We already established that. <coughs> so there are three <laughs> interior angles here. This is not the remote one. That's the one that's close to the, that's adjacent to the exterior angle. It's the other two that are far away that are always going to be the remote ones. The sums of those two angles always equal the, uh, the, the measure of the exterior angle. That's the exterior angle theorem. Okay, so we can use that to our advantage. Let's, here, let's do, hang on. Don't look. Nobody look. Don't cheat. Oh, that's not what I want to do. This is what I want to do. Okay, so could we solve for x in this situation? Yes. Yeah, we could, right? Because look at this. We can set up a geometry relationship that gives us an algebra equation, right? We know that here we've got these two remote interior angles and the corresponding, corresponding is a bad word, and the related exterior angle, the exterior angle that goes with them. So we know that the sums of the measures of the interior angles have to add up to the measure of the single exterior angle, right? And so that's how we get, that's how we get this equation. x plus 65 must equal 2x plus 10, right? And so from that point on, it's a pretty simple thing for us to solve for x. What are the steps we would do to solve for x here? Which direction? It's been a little while. Dude, we're all a little rusty, me included. So we got to go, which way are we going to push the x's in this equation? Right. To, the right. to the right. Good. Push the numbers to the left. To the left. <clears throat> so if we do that, let's get rid of it. There we go. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm struggling a little bit right here. Out of practice. So then we end up getting, let's see, if we subtract x from both sides, we get 1x on the right, subtract 10, we get 55 on the left. Okay, so if we get 55 on the left, then we could, you know, we could use that to, to solve for the, the magnitudes of all the angles, couldn't we? What's, what's going to be the measure of that angle down there? Could you tell me? What do you think? We know this one, x is 55, right? So this one is 55 degrees. So how could I find that one? Oh, okay, good. So add those two together and get what? Get what was that at 120? 55 and 65? So how much is left over for this angle? We think how much is left over for this angle? 60. Yeah, because they add up, add up to 180, don't they? All the interior angles add up to 180. So that's got to be 60, doesn't it? Right? Okay, we could also plug the x in down here and get 2 times 55 plus 10. 2 times 55 is what? Um, it's 110 plus 10 is 120. 110 plus 10 is 120. Okay, so we know that this one is 120 degrees. Does that <clears throat> exterior angle theorem seem a little less mysterious now in a way? Think about this. We know that this angle down here, the adjacent angle, combined with the other two interior angles, has to add up to 180, doesn't it? Right? But what do we call those two angles right there? 
what kind of a relationship do they form? Walter, well, what do we call those two angles? If I have two angles like this, yeah, that are, does that make sense, that are adjacent, that form a line, they're, uh, supplementary. they're supplementary. They're a linear pair, which makes them supplementary. So what do they add up to? 180. 180, yeah. So this angle and this one have to make 180. This one and these two combined have to make 180. So then doesn't it mean that it just makes sense that those two have to be the same as that one, don't they? Right? There we go. So by the same token, <clears throat> we could solve for x here, couldn't we? What's, what's one way we could do this one? Just to ignore the stuff on the left. Just look at the triangle. What's one way we could set up a, a math equation here from a geometry relationship to solve for x? What do you think? Jeremy, what's one way? How could I set up? Give me a geometry relationship that's going to allow me to maybe set up an equation with x. Ninety. Uh, with that okay, so there's ninety. We know that was ninety. Okay. Uh, and then three x. Plus two x plus x. Good. Equals. What's this? What's the sum of all those angles added up? One eighty. There you go. Right. There's one way to do it. Okay, we could say 90 plus 2x plus x equals 180, right? And just solve for x that way. What's another way? Could we maybe even just avoid that 90? Right? Because we know that if this is a right triangle, what do the two acute angles always add up to? You know, in a right triangle? If that's 90, what do the other two always have to add up to? 90, yeah, yeah. Well, I like what you did, though. That's, that's a great way to do it. The other way we could do it would be just to say 2x plus x, because it's a right triangle, only because it's a right triangle, 2x plus x equals 90. Either way, we just solve for x. Don't forget to, right? Okay. And if we do that, uh, we just get x equals 30. Right, so I can plug that back in and get 30, and then 2 times 30 is 60, and there's my 90. Okay, good. All right. What are we out of here on Tuesday? Seven minutes. Seven minutes is all we no, got? Five minutes. Five minutes? Oh, well, I was going to get the film book, but there's no, there's no use. I think we're good.